This is a versus battle I was asked to do because both of these characters are viewed in the upper tier within the series. Rika is a special grade cursed spirit and even though Maharaga doesn't have a grade because he is a Shikigami, most of the fans just assume if you were to place him next to these special grade cursed spirits throughout the show, he is definitely stronger than these special grade spirits. So the community basically wants to put these two power heads, go against each other and see what would happen if they were to fight. But unfortunately for those who are looking for a close fight, I have bad news for you. This fight is not even remotely close. First, I want to say if you enjoy JJK content, then I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. As I post videos every couple of days on different topics that you guys give me and a few that I come up with on my own. Now let's get into the video. First, let's get into Rika and talk about how strong she actually is. Rika's power is mainly motivated by love. We see that when people try to attack Yuta, she would display great strength and in some cases go into her awakened form where her eye actually comes out. In this fight though, there is no Yuta to protect so she wouldn't be fighting in this awakened eye form. She would just be fighting in her base form that we see her in most of the time. The first fight we should go over where we get the most information on Rika's current strength is the fight between Ryu and Uro. On her own, Rika is a physical fighter and we see her get into some important altercations throughout the fight. We know Rika is pretty tough as when Ryu shoots a blast at her, she can just catch it with her hand. Catching this blast makes Ryu think that Rika is actually tougher than Yuta, which is impressive as Yuta is renowned as having a bunch of cursed energy to protect his body, so while fighting him, Ryu says that he feels like he's punching a water tank, and Ryu thinks Rika is even tougher than this. She is able to send Ryu flying with a single punch, something Yuta failed to do while fighting Ryu on the rooftop. Ryu does recover however and does send Rika flying backwards as well. So if anything, Rika and Ryu are physically around the same level as they are able to hurt each other with punches even sending each other flying. We also know that Rika's lone blast are pretty weak. If anything, they are even weaker than she is because Ryu himself says that big thing can fire on its own and he catches a blast from Rika, even stating that this blast wasn't very powerful. At the end of the fight against Ryu, Ryu is actually able to punch her so hard she dissipates. So within this fight, we learn a couple things. Rika is very strong physically. She can go back and forth with Ryu a bit, but her blasts are very weak. There's another minor thing we can cover when it comes to Rika, and that comes when Yuji is fighting Yuta. Once Rika comes out and holds Yuji, he says that she's so strong he can't even move an inch. This isn't too crazy as it's not like Yuji is this super powerful character or anything, but Yuji definitely is a cut above the average sorcerer and has been stated multiple times to have superhuman strength, so you can take this as you will. Rika is stated to be a curse of boundless curse energy, so in a fight with Maharaga, she will be able to use as many blasts as she pleases and curse energy shouldn't be a problem. So going into the fight with her, her staple will be her punches and blasts and she will try to get a win based off of these abilities. But unfortunately, if you read the title then you would know, with all of this in mind, Rika loses badly. Everything I've said up to this point, Rika's strength, her blast, her curse energy, none of it matters in this fight and I will explain why. So with that being said, let's get into Maharaga's abilities. First off, he has a sword that completely vaporizes cursed spirits. Yes, can you believe it? That sword that Maharaga hits Sukuna with has positive energy and instantly kills any cursed spirit it touches. Sukuna himself, even while having 15 fingers worth of strength, says that if he was not inside Yuji's body, that if he was in his cursed spirit form, that he would have died to Maharaga, right then and right there. Positive energy vaporizes cursed spirits because cursed spirits are made up of negative energy. This is why even though Sukuna is so strong, even though he can destroy an entire city with his domain, and even though he can beat down Jogo like it is nothing, one sword swing from Maharaga would have been enough to kill him in that moment if he was a cursed spirit. And you might be thinking, wow, yeah, the matchup is looking pretty bad for Rika based off of this alone. But this isn't all Maharaga has. 
Maharaga has the wheel on his head, and this wheel is called Furu's Incantation of the Ten Sacred Treasures. This wheel allows for Maharaga to adapt to any and all phenomena. We see Sukuna slice Maharaga up a couple times, but once this wheel spins on his head, his body just comes back together in one piece. It gets so crazy that even after Sukuna uses a domain and chops Maharaga in a bunch of different places, Maharaga can just get up because he already adapted to these slashing attacks. So what in the world can Rika do against this? But wait, don't answer. It gets even worse for Rika. Not only does Maharaga have the sword, not only does Maharaga have the wheel, Maharaga also has incredible physical strength. Maharaga hits Sukuna so hard that he sends him flying through buildings and Gege even said in a chapter extra that Sukuna had actually been punched so hard that he flew outside of the barrier here. I mean come on we are talking about 15 finger Sukuna here. Meanwhile Rika is getting sent flying by Ryu. Maharaga is sending 15 finger Sukuna flying through buildings and barriers. So let's step back for a second. Maharaga has strength. Maharaga has a sword that vaporizes cursed spirits, and a wheel on his head that adapts to any attack. And since Rika is mainly a physical fighter, her punches aren't doing anything. They're getting adapted to or even tanked. Her blast, even weaker than the punches like I covered earlier. So those aren't doing anything either. So I will tell you the best thing Rika can do in a fight against Maharaga, and that is to run. And you know, it seems that when most people think of this versus battle, at first they think, oh, Rika should win. But after you remind them about this sword that Maharaga has that vaporizes cursed spirits, then you remind them about the physical strength that Maharaga has and the ability to recover from any attack and adapt to it, they begin to slowly realize that, yeah, Rika's pretty screwed. And also the fact that Rika won't have Yuta here. We know that Rika gets stronger with love, gets stronger with this Yuta amp. If Yuta is not here, those feats that we see her display, say for example the blast that she hits Ghetto with, the only reason that her and Yuta let off a blast that powerful is because Yuta made her fall deeply in love so they created a super powerful blast. And that blast came from when she was in her awakened state, that state where her eye is open and veiny. That form of her will not be in this fight because, I mean, there's no Yuta. There's no reason for her to get super protective. So she will just be in this fight and honestly, this is exactly how the fight will go. They will be across from each other and one sword swing will just take her out. The positive energy around the sword is something that Rika cannot handle. It's not like you can tank something like that. We saw that when Sukuna got hit by the sword, he actually stopped it with his arm. But he said that the positive energy around the sword is the problem. That positive energy will come in contact with Rika and destroy her completely. The only way to beat Maharaga is to hit him with an attack and take him out in one blow. Because you can't use the same attack again because he would just have adapted to it. And like I said, Rika just fights with punches and blasts when she's on her own. All of those curse techniques that we see used, that is Yuta using those different curse techniques. Rika is always like a support character. She uses her physical strength like what she does against Yuji, or like she does against Ryu when she punches him. So on her own, she's just like a boxer, you could say. And Maharaga would love to get in a boxing match with Rika. The fighting style, the fighting matchup is so bad for Rika, because if they are sitting there boxing with each other, that one sword swing will take her out. And now I am about to get into a bit of spoilers, so just be warned, I'm telling you now, warning for the spoilers. But for those of you who don't care, I'll go ahead and tell you. We saw in the recent chapters, you know, Sukuna taking over Megami's body. So who knows how strong this new Maharaga will be. I want to know how strong you guys think this Maharaga will be. We saw when Sukuna used the new way. You know, new way is normally around the size of Megami or even like a little bit bigger. But we saw when Sukuna uses new way, it is bigger than the building they're on. It looks about, I would say, 300 feet from wingtip to wingtip. So who can imagine how powerful the Sukuna Maharaga will be? And I also want to know if you guys think that the Maharaga will be bigger or if the Maharaga will be the same size but just much stronger and faster. If I had to guess, I personally would say that I think Maharaga is going to stay the same size 
but would just gain enormous strength and speed. So it's lucky for Rika that, you know, this versus battle is between the Maharaga that we have seen so far and Rika's current state, even though that versus battle is bad for Rika. But this new Maharaga, we don't have to get into that. That Maharaga will completely slam Rika even worse than he already does. Now, I know some people may disagree with this outcome, but I do think most of you guys will agree but if you do disagree with the outcome of Rika getting beat badly, then let me know what you think would happen differently than just the sword taking her out of existence. And if you have an argument for Rika, then let me know in the comments below. And I also want to say, if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as I post videos every couple days on different topics that you guys give me and a few I come up with myself. Thank you for watching. See you next time.